Mr. President, Excellencies, Austria aligns itself with the statement of the European Union held earlier. At the outset, let me once again emphasize that Austria condemns the heinous terrorist attack by Hamas on Israeli civilians on 7 October in the strongest possible terms. The attack was unprecedented in its brutality. There is no justification for terror. Israel has the inherent right to defend itself in the face of such violent and indiscriminate attacks in line with international humanitarian law. We call for an immediate and unconditional release of all hostages abducted by Hamas and other terrorist organizations. Our joint priority must now be to prevent a regional escalation of violence and hostilities, and we welcome efforts of all partners in this regard. We call on all regional actors to refrain from any action that adds further fuel to the fire. Colleagues, let's be clear. It was the barbaric terror attack by Hamas that brought unbearable suffering on innocent people. It is Hamas that puts the civilian population in Gaza in harm's way, including by using them as human shields. By purposefully directing its resources and urgently needed fuel to its rocket launchers instead of to desalination plants and hospitals, Hamas also bears responsibility for the humanitarian hardships of the civilians in Gaza. Colleagues, international humanitarian law must be respected at all times. It is crucial to ensure the protection of civilian infrastructure, including hospitals and schools, and to allow humanitarian access to deliver food, water, and medicine to Gaza. We express our concern at the rapidly deteriorating humanitarian situation in Gaza and reiterate the importance of the provision of urgent humanitarian aid and ensure that it is not abused by terrorist organizations. We support the call for safe, full, and unimpeded access throughout Gaza and a sustained effort to deliver vital life-saving assistance to the population. We welcome the recent humanitarian deliveries via the Rafah crossing point and thank all actors involved, including Egypt, the United States, the United Nations, and Israel in facilitating these deliveries. Mr. President, both Israelis and Palestinians have the right to live in peace and security. We should not allow anyone to undermine the positive dynamic that led to a normalization of relations between several Arab countries and Israel. But it has come more than clear who is not interested in any sort of peace, Hamas and other terror organizations. They have no future to offer to the Palestinian people. Genuine peace and security for Israelis and Palestinians alike can only be achieved through a political solution. For us, the goal is clear. We need a negotiated two-state solution allowing Israelis and Palestinians to live side by side in peace and security. Our guiding principle is and will remain international law. Mr. President, let me briefly turn to another aspect of this debate. One reason for gathering in the GA today is that several vetoes prevented the Security Council from adopting a resolution. As we have said at other occasions, the veto right of the permanent members should not paralyze the Security Council from discharging its duties. We therefore welcome that we've had the opportunity to have this discussion here today. Thank you. This has been the Nod News Network, transmission complete.